Ice Cream fans, meet Marcus. Marcus is always happy. He's always happy. No matter what life throws at him, he always seems to have a song in his heart and a spring in his step. Thanks for hanging out, man. It was great yeah, to see you again. It was awesome. All see right, you around. See you around, man. Oh, it's right my umbrella. And I demand to know why. So I sat down with him to ask the hard question. So what's your secret? Why are you always so happy? Why am I always so happy? It's probably because I'm using one flow for building web apps. What is one flow? So one flow is a way of building web apps fully in Java. So I get all the kind of fancy web app stuff, but I write everything in Java. Is it like widget? Not really, no. Is it like tapestry? No. Is it like struts? No. Is it like echo? No. Is it like echo too? <laughs> no. Okay, what is it? So it's a programmatic way of building UIs out of components. So we have this huge set of UI components, everything from buttons and input fields to data grids and kind of all the pieces you need to build an app. Right. And you just put together those in, in Java and it the framework takes care of everything else. It just makes sure that that gets displayed in your browser as an interactive application. So there are no HTML templates. There's no JavaScript that you need to kind of work with. It's just all Java for you. You have me at no JavaScript. How is that done? Is it all just server-side postbacks and no client-side state at all? Well, essentially what happens is the state of the application runs on the server and then the browser is more or less like a rendering engine. So. The framework and just instructs the browser what needs to render. That's all of it happens kind of behind the scenes for you, so you don't do any of that yourself. What sorcery is this? What do you mean all the client side state happens with orchestration from the server? Yeah, exactly. So the app runs on the JVM and it gets rendered in the browser transparently to you. Okay. So is this like are you a new framework that's trying to take uh, advantage of the burgeoning rise of, of frameworks that are going to do server-side rendering for you? Is this like a reaction to React? Not exactly. So we've been doing this for like 20 years. So we've oh. been around for a while. We, so just we know how it's before done. Before React. Before React by about 10, 15 years. <laughs> okay. So, it, is this, so this is a Java technology that exactly. you can use to build web apps. Um, and what are the, what, what's the catch? Like, how much does this thing cost? It's an open source Apache licensed product. So it's open source. You can use it for whatever stuff you want. We do sell like enterprise subscriptions for those who need like more support or whatever in, in their application building. But if you're just a hobbyist, you want to build stuff, it's all open source. Apache 2 licensed, you said? Yeah. That's nice. That, that, I mean, I could take that to production for the stuff that I do use in the open source license. That works. Yeah. Just fine. And you're saying there's an integration with Spring Boot. That's right. Yeah. So most of our users are using Spring Boot. So we really integrate well with that. I dig it. Uh, I dig it. That's, that makes me happy. All right. I think we just need to kind of see it in action. What about uh, for, the, for those people who are, for those few who are uh, interested in using JavaScript, can they with this? So we have a separate framework for that called Hilla, which also works on Spring Boot on the back end, but it gives you like a reactive TypeScript front end where you can template it in HTML and you can kind of do do your JavaScript if you want to do that. So you still, so still you have do. the same components and everything. Yeah. You still have full stack type safety. It's just a different way of building the application. So you said TypeScript, so still no JavaScript. You like if you really wanted to, you could use no, JavaScript, really but it. like the idea of Hilla is that because you have a type language Java on the back end, you have a type language TypeScript on the front end, and we generate types and kind of accessor methods between. You get full kind of database to view layer type safety. Round trip. Exactly. Awesome. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks very much for your time. Let's go ahead, go ahead and see what this looks like in action. Thanks, Josh. Sometimes the answers leave me with just more questions. I think I'll just need to find out by trying out Vodden Flow for myself. Let's dive into it. We're going to start that Spring.io. We're going to generate a new project. We're going to call it Vaadin. We're going to use Maven because that's the default sort of recommended approach. 
We're going to bring in the Vaadin support. We use the Reactive Web support. We're going to use the uh, Spring Security support. Uh, and of course, we're going to bring in the GraalVM native image support. That'll do. We'll hit Generate and open that up in our IDE. Our application is going to be a typical uh, Vaadin application. And, uh, you know, we can just start writing UIs by writing some code. So we're going to build a, a message or chat uh, view. And it's going to extend vertical layout. And this vertical layout will have a constructor. And it's just going to be a component with a route. We're going to use route. We're going to tell it that it's just going to be the root login route. So we'll leave it as that. And we have to register a few components. What we're going to do is we're going to build an application that lets us interact with each other through a chat widget. So we need a message list. So we're going to say new message list. And we're going to create a text input for the message. So uh, we'll say new message input. Set the widget to full size. We're going to add the list and the text input. We're going to expand the list. And we're going to set the input to uh, set the input to with full. Okay. And then finally, we're going to need to work in terms of a custom domain. So we'll create a service to deal with our data. And this chat service will just be a natural place to put all business logic associated with our service and our chat. We'll create a record here called message, string username, string text, and instant time. Okay, and our chat itself will have two methods, one to support adding mess messages and another one to support uh, consuming those messages. And what we want to do is to have an ongoing stream of new updated data. And what better way to model that than to use reactive stream publishers. So we're going to create a, a uh, sync of type message. We'll say syncs.mini.multicast.com direct best effort. And then from that, we'll create a, uh, a reactive stream that'll just be an ongoing view of the data. So messages flux equals messages as flux. And then finally, we'll have some methods to actually add and consume that data. So the first one will be called join, and it'll just return the publisher. And then the next one will return will allow us to add a message like this. So we'll say this dot uh, sync dot try init next new message. And we'll say that the, for now, since we don't have a username, we'll just do whatever, jlong. We'll have the text, which is the message proper. And then we'll have now. So there's our very basic service. In order to display all this, I'm going to need to now wire up the components that we just built in our chat view with some event handling logic. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of logic here to work with the chat service. So we'll inject that chat service here into the constructor. We don't really even need to store it. You could, but we don't need to in this case. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is we'll say, okay, service dot join dot subscribe and so for each new message that arrives we're going to update the message list and in order to do that we need to create a new array list full of the values of the current input list so we say message list dot get message list dot get items and then we're going to add a new item a new message list item and the text will be the message.text, the message.time, and the message.username. Okay, that's part one. The other thing we need to do is to make sure that when somebody enters something, that we 
respond to that. So we can say, when there's an event, uh, we want to use the service to send a message. So uh, event.getValue. All right. Because we're using a dispatcher thread to render our components separate from our business logic, just like with Swing and a lot of other UI toolkits, Android and all that, you got to be careful about which thread you do the updates to the to the UI state. So in this handler here, even though we're processing the incoming data in a reactive thread, we need to get the current UI. If it's present, then, and only then, we get a reference to it and we can say ui.access and then put a new command in. And here, we're going to say list.setItems. So message list set items, and we're going to pass in the new list. Okay, and of course this can be a Lambda expression. And then finally, because we want our UI to update automatically, whenever there's a change to the UI state, we're going to enable uh, push, server-side push, which requires two changes. One, we'll have push, and we'll have application shell configurator. Let's go ahead and try running it. Localhost. There we are. Oh, we forgot to disable Spring Security. So, palm.xml. Get that out. Command Shift I to re import. And we'll stop the existing run. All right, there's our first instance. Here's our second. We'll say, hello, good, test. There we are, there's both of them on side by side. Now, obviously in this case, we're logged in on both chats as one user. There's no integration with security. So let's take our build just a little bit further and use Spring Security. We're gonna hit Command-Shift-I to re-import that build. And we're going to now need to build a login and define some users. So let's create a new configuration class, class security configuration. And this is going to extend Vaadin web security. And we're going to define some beans uh, in a type of object called the user details manager, which is just a, a way to describe authentication in the, uh, in the system. I'm going to use the user in memory user details manager. And this in turn, this in turn will give us what will, will require a collection of users. And I'm just going to create some users here. So I'll say users set dot of Marcus, Josh, Tiffany dot stream dot map user dot with user with default password encoder dot username name dot password will be pw roles will be user dot build and we're going to create a list out of that and pass that right in okay good now we also need to set up some uh, a, a, a user interface component to allow the user to authenticate so we'll create a new endpoint here map it to login Login view extends the vertical layout. And we'll say uh, in the constructor that we want to define a form, login form. The form in turn will have an action, which is just a post to the configured login action. And we'll say add form. And then finally, we need to tell Spring Security about this new uh, form. So we'll create a, okay, we're gonna say, we're gonna configure HTTP security, passing in this, and we'll say set login view, HTTP login view .class. Okay. And finally, because we're using Spring Security now, we need to update our chat to allow, to allow everybody to, uh, access it assuming they are authenticated. 
So permit all. And then finally, with that, we need to update our message sending logic so that we can drive the user not from some default that we hard coded, but from the currently authenticated user. And so let's go back to our send method here uh, and change the way it works. We'll get the username by saying that we're going to inject the current authentication context. Add that to the constructor. We'll say this.ctx.getPrincipalUsername or else anonymous. So there's our username. Let's go ahead and restart it and see what we get. Look, let's close down all the browser instances. Create a new instance over here, a new instance over there, localhost over there. So uh, Josh PW on the right, Marcus PW on the left. Hello. Hi. Not bad. Now, of course, no demo would be uh, as complete as it could be if we didn't then take this build and turn it into a Gravium native image. We have one little fly in the ointment, not a big deal. I suspect by the time you watch this, it'll be a uh, not a non-issue, but we do need to list, we need to whitelist certain packages, and that's in com, vaden, org, vaden, and the package in which your code lives, and that's for our example, com example, vaden. Now, we're going to stop the existing running application, and we're going to use Maven here, the local configured Maven support. We'll say minus p native, minus p production, native compile and we might want to just skip test because you know they just double the compile time and we don't have any tests at the moment target button and there we have our application up and running in no time at all let's go to the browser and just confirm everything is as it was so we'll log in over here over here Everything seems to be working. And just like that, I was happy too. For the first time since applets were a thing, I was well and truly a full stack developer, whilst remaining entirely on the JVM no less. Thank you, Vaden, and thank you everyone for watching. 